to the Tennessee Volunteers. Um, what else do you want me to say? I mean, Tennessee lost 15 straight to Alabama going back to 2007. Nick Saban has never lost to the Volunteers until tonight. Tonight at Neyland Stadium, it was rocking. It was a huge and electrifying atmosphere in college football. And there's no other way to put it other than Alabama. Like, okay, you look at this. This was an offensive onslaught. It was great to see Bryce Young out there. He looked like his old self, looked great, was throwing the ball, had a couple miscues. Um, not very impressed with the defense, obviously, but maybe. And I don't want to make excuses for it. Um, but is it possible that Tennessee's offense is that good that they were able to stop Alabama's defense? Is it a, is there a possibility of that? Let's look at, um, like the box score and everything. Pull this up here. Let's take a look. Um, so 52 to 49, the final. Tennessee outscores Alabama 21 to 7 right out the gate. It was a great start. Alabama outscores for the next two quarters 13 to 7, 15 to 6. But the fourth quarter, you look at the fourth quarter, right? Going into it, it was, uh, what was it, 35-34, something like that. The fourth quarter decided this game. Some field goals, the game winner, um, a missed field goal it looked like from Alabama. Uh, there was so much that decided this game. There was so many factors into this game. Uh you know, and I think that Alabama kind of shot themselves in the foot a little bit. I think Tennessee also at the same time did some things well, especially on offense. I want to look at the team stats here. Um, the Vols had 29 first downs. Alabama had 32. Here's – let's look at the key stats – and determine what led to it. Because obviously we know it came down to the better offense. More yardage for Alabama in both in in passing, but more so in rushing. Alabama killed themselves with penalties in this game. Um, you know, they had more time of possession, they had more penalties. They had more passing yards. They they led in a lot of these categories, and it did come down to who was going to put together a final drive, and, of course, Tennessee able to do that. Um, you know, uh, Hendon Hooker looked really outstanding in this game with five touchdowns. Bryce only had two. Uh, Jameer Gibbs had three rushing touchdowns. 103 yards, 24 carries. Uh, Cameron Law, too, had six receptions for 90 yards. Uh, Jalen Hyatt was the lead receiver, uh, which now that I look at this, it looks like he was the only receiver because six receptions, 207 yards, and five touchdowns. That matches up with Hendon Hooker's five touchdowns on the night. So it, I, I, I don't know how to put this. Tennessee, you earned it. You earned it. You beat Alabama finally. You're not a dead program anymore. You're one of the premier teams this season, at least, in college ball. And there, it's just so weird. It's weird. I, I've never experienced this. I mean, I, I grew up watching Alabama, but... Well, I, I can't remember 2006 that well. I was maybe only, you know, four or five years old. Um, I can't remember 03. I was two. I was I was young. <laughs> I was young the last time this happened. But tonight, Tennessee, up on Rocky Top, Rocky Top, Tennessee. 
There, I did it one time for you. I'm never going to do it again, okay? But up on Rocky Top, the Volunteers have finally won the third Saturday in October. It took a while to find the right coach. It took a while to find the right quarterback. It took a while to find whatever it was that made tonight happen. It took a while. But Tennessee finally got the job done. They ended their losing streak of 15 games to Alabama. What's next for Tennessee? They got to eventually play Georgia in November. And I think I know that might sound crazy, but if you can beat Alabama this year, you can probably go beat anybody else. If you play your cards right, they could win the East. We could have a rematch in Atlanta. Tennessee could run the table to the playoffs. The sky's the limit, folks. The sky is the limit for what Tennessee can do this year in college football. And the third Saturday in October rivalry is very historic, and they're still just getting started on what they're going to do in college football this year in 2022.